Hey guys, Woodruff here. Now we're getting into everyone's favorite topic aside from diarrhea, fecal incontinence. So much fun, so little. It's a little time. <laughs> for some reason, I thought that the alarm had already gone off, so don't mind that. Um, things are closing up for tonight in my house, which means the cats are going to start fighting soon. So I, I bet you there's going to be some sort of interrupt interruption to this fecal incontinence lecture, but uh, we'll see. Positive vibes only, fingers crossed. So anyway, um, fecal incontinence. It's something that, you know, maybe compared to diarrhea, you may not have experienced in your life. Um, if you haven't yet, at some point in your life, you probably will. Um, pretty much this is when the ability to poop becomes involuntary. Um, and so in other words, it could be that you have a weak um, a sphincter or a weak, uh, an inability, uh, a weak muscle to close your sphincter and your rectum. Um, so stuff can slip out. There are neurological problems like spinal injuries, um, other brain injuries that can lead to this during childbirth. We, uh, get to be incontinent. So that's why I should say, I guess that a lot of people that, um, uh, what do you call it? Um, when they, um, uh, a lot of people maybe don't know that they're, have been incontinent before, but uh, most of the time as a labor and delivery nurse, you'll clean people up and it's not that you're going to tell them like, Hey, you pooped. Um, but yeah, it's definitely one of those things to consider. All right. I'm waiting. I'm looking. The cats are about to, about to interact and start to get in their little, um, their little do -si do Anyway, if you hear hissing, everything's fine. Um, no deaths happening here. I don't, um, you know, like I know there's like dog fighting. I don't think there's cat fights, like where they put cats against cats or something like that in a ring and try to get them to fight. Um, but I don't, um, you know, try to do that with my cats either. They're just both a little bit older and demented and just live a special life. So anyway, um, Another reason for fecal incontinence can be chronic constipation. So I talked about this in my diarrhea video is that sometimes people can have diarrhea, but it's actually a result of that they have an impaction or they have a hard wall of stool and then um, liquid stool is seeping around it. So fecal incontinence, it is very similar that it can have the same cause. So what are my... Um, uh, expected findings or what I would uh, expect to hear from a patient who has fecal incontinence. Um, it's definitely one of the first questions I want to ask them, and this is relates to what they're going to say too, is, is that do they know when they need to go? Uh, many may not be able to recognize when they need to go or may not be able to tell that they need to go. And so you definitely want to ask about that early because there's a bigger, there's a big difference between how I can help a person who doesn't know when they need to go and someone who does know when they need to go, but maybe has a different limitation that's causing their incontinence. Some people might have a muscle strength issue and they can't hold it in. And so definitely want to consider that as well. Um, and um, uh, what do you call it? Uh, you know, asking them. Uh, you know, maybe about like, you know, because sometimes if they feel like they're trying to hold it in, but they just can't, they might have the weak muscle. Um, some patients might not even realize that they went. So it's really important to kind of know these things because it also tells me about their risk, their risk for skin breakdown and other things. So ask them if they know when they need to go or how often they're going. Ask them about the consistency when they are going because fecal incontinence doesn't necessarily mean diarrhea. Fecal incontinence could be um, very form stool, um, but just an inability to know when they need to go or to hold it in. And we also want to look for odor or changes in the stool quality because um, that can tell us about what's going on too. Um, additionally, we'll check for rectal tone. And, you know, this is one of those things I have never checked someone's rectal tone, but um, I've seen many doctors check for it, especially like in spinal cord injuries, stuff like that. Um, I, I do as the nurse, I can check for impaction. That's where I'm really looking around the rectal area. And like, you can literally see it. You can sometimes see the stool and like, it's like the rectum's open and there's just this like hard ball of stool at the end. Um, and I have disimpacted a few people in my life. It's not the funnest part of the job, but gosh, it can bring them some great relief. So, um, and then uh, nutritional habits, um, kind of see um, what kind of diet they have, how much fiber and stuff they have in their diet. And then of course, I, if they're incontinent, I want to assess their skin to see if they have any breakdown, just like I do with diarrhea. So incontinence is better if they have less episodes of incontinence, um, if it is able to be prevented, because there are preventable and non-preventable causes of incontinence. Um, if they're not experienced, uh, and, and of course, if they're not experiencing any complications, um, they're worse if there's more episodes, it's more loose, or if there's any signs of impaction, infection, or skin complications. 
Um, the other thing that I probably, I don't have it on here, but the other thing that you want to assess is their ability to get to the bathroom. Sometimes they can have a functional incontinence is, is that they know they need to go. Um, they have perfect muscle strength in their rectum, but they don't have the physical like leg strength to get up and go to the bathroom. So that's the only other thing you might want to assess there. So what do we do medically to treat fecal incontinence? So um, this one's gonna be a little confusing, but hear me out, is that um, we actually give them um, sometimes uh, what we call a bulk laxative or a bulk forming laxative. It helps to thicken their stool. Um, or sometimes suppositories or enemas. Now you may be wondering, you're like, why in the world, if someone's incontinent, will we give them things to make them go? Well, one, people still got to poop. Incontinence doesn't mean diarrhea. Again, this could be someone's just regular bowel movement. They just can't hold it in um, or they don't know when they need to go. So uh, medications like this can help um, specifically if there is an issue where they're constipated. So like think about if someone's really constipated and we need them to have a bowel movement um, and they have that impaction, this is where the like the psyllium fiber is gonna be super helpful. And we'll talk more about them when we talk about constipation. Or some people are having really liquid stools with their incontinence. So if nothing else, it helps to bulk things up, which can help with their skin. Um, alternatively too, sometimes when people, we can't necessarily, um, change their muscle tone and other things we want to, if we, if we can't, um, change the fact that they're going to be incontinent, we want to at least try to get them on a regular schedule. So, um, by using suppositories or enemas, we can also get them on what's called a bowel regimen. Um, and that can help to, uh, like, you know, if we know like, Hey, their bowel regimen at night, they get the suppository and then I send them on the toilet and then they can go, then we can avoid this incontinence. Um, other things that can be done, physical therapy to strengthen the appropriate muscles, um, biofeedback, which we talked about with headaches, and then electrical stimulation. Um, and um, all these things kind of think of like a TENS unit, but for the rectum, so much fun. Um, all these things are going to just help to provide strength to the accessory muscles and things like that and to retrain the way the body works. Um, alternatively, you know, if, that, if it's a weak muscle issue or a issue with the sphincter, we can repair those. Um, some patients, if it's going to be long term, it's an issue, they start getting like really severe breakdown, we may need to um, consider colostomy. And then um, there are fecal incontinent devices, you know, there's pouches, there's internal like, um, uh, like rectal tubes and stuff like that, that can be used. Um, I think I have them. Yeah, here, this is like the rectal tube. This is what's called like there's Digni Shield, Digni Care. Um, and you can see it goes in the rectum and inf has an inflatable balloon. So these are only helpful if they have pure liquid stool. Um, you know, if they have rectal, uh, with a rectal pouch, they can have whatever type of stool, um, but it's most helpful if they have liquid stool. But um, with this, they have to have liquid stool or um, things are just going to get clogged. Um, so it's great if you have a patient that is having like nonstop. Now, this is not, this is not meant to be for convenience. It's kind of the same, like we used to put Foley catheters in on a lot more patients, more convenient. Um, same with these, like it got to the point now at my hospital where um, we have to have an order and they're really closely looking at it. And I'll tell you, I used to not mind these things. And even though they leak and they're not perfect, it was so much nicer than having to clean my patient up 50 times. But I'll tell you then I had a patient come in that had, um, you know, G lower GI bleeding. And when they went and did a scope and I was at the bedside watching their scope, um, they, there was the ring around their anal area, right where their rectal tube was. And that's what they were bleeding from. And I was like, oh, well, you know, like this is really bad for the anal area. I thought I heard something um, really bad for the anal area. And so as much as it may sometimes seem like, oh yeah, this is what I want. And there's times that it's needed. Like if I have a patient that has extreme breakdown um, or is going like liters or really high amounts, I wouldn't even say liters, but like hundreds every shift, they might need one of these just straight liquid stool. Um, but um, just always kind of keep it in mind. Like I always kind of keep an eye on things and like, let's say, so I start my shift at 7 PM. Uh, I kind of see what the last nurse got out. And if they say, Hey, I'm like, a hundred out. And then on my shift, I'm getting nothing, my shift, and they're not getting out hundreds and hundreds. Then I'm usually going to take it out by the end of my shift, because we want to keep these in for the least amount of time as possible. You always want to consider long-term for your patient. Um, as much as sometimes cleaning up poop is no fun. It, it happened to me. Actually, I worked a shift last night and I was sitting there and, um, uh, what do you call it? Um, I was like, so I had such a busy night and then it was six o'clock and my patient, psh, like large diarrhea all throughout the bed. And I was like, no, like why right now? And I was like, this is like the worst possible time. And, um, but um, yeah, it's it sometimes it's, it's always hard, but people got to go when they got to go.
So as the nurse, I want to support a safe and effective bowel routine, uh, monitor their skin closely, lots of barrier cream on the patient. And we also sometimes use like Mepilexis, other stuff on the booty to kind of um, keep it happy and healthy. Um, protect, uh, provide a barrier. Uh, we want to tell them to things that they can do to avoid triggers of fecal incontinence, stuff like caffeine, gas producing vegetables and things like that. Um, and then also increasing fiber, like we talked about, uh, can be helpful for certain types of incontinence or certain causes. And then kegels, um, as well can be useful. So kegels, we're going to talk about this more when we talk about urinary problems. These are ways to strengthen what we call your pelvic floor muscles. So like, you know, like you could be sitting here doing kegels right now, or like I always say in my class, you know, while we're talking about them, do your kegels. Um, and it's like, it's, a, it's your tightening um, internally. It's usually feels like your urinary muscles um, and you're um, contracting them to kind of strengthen them. So think of it kind of like doing like a bicep curl but in your, um, uh, what do you call it, um, pelvic floor muscles. And um, it's definitely something that's like not something that you can visually see from the outside, but um, it can make a big difference. So a lot of times if they have an issue where their uh, we cut, um, muscles are maybe not as strong down there, we want to consider encouraging kegels. So it says here kegels for impaction and constipation related, but kegels is actually, so the fiber is more for impaction and constipation related. The kegels are for anyone who has a weak muscle, um, whether it's like a weak rectal tone. Um, now, if they have no rectal tone, we necessarily do that if it's like a neurological cause, but let's just say like through childbirth or through other things, they have a weaker um, muscle down there, then doing those kegels can be super helpful and um, can kind of build up those muscles. So kind of think of it like your exercise for your bum. Um, and then just keep in mind with these patients that they're already embarrassed, be kind. And so like, there was this lady that I had not too long ago, like a month or so ago, and she was the sweetest little lady. And she was always so scared to bother me. And like, she was always like, she was so embarrassed about, um, sometimes she would go and she, um, it would come on really fast and she didn't know. And she was like apologizing profusely. So, you know, like I said, last, last, this morning, um, when I was getting off work, I wasn't like, oh, damn, man, what a time to go. Like, I always joke with my patients. Sometimes I sit there and I'm like, okay, like they'll poop at like four o'clock. And I'm like, okay, no more pooping until after seven o'clock, like, you know, the next shift. And that's a joke. Um, but, um, I mean, you just always want to consider that as hard as it might seem like for you and inconvenient for you, it is like, imagine how they feel. Imagine if you couldn't tell that you needed to go or couldn't control it, even if you know you need to go. And then someone else has to wipe your butt for you, clean you up. And um, yeah, you know, like don't, don't make it any harder than it needs to be. So just, just be a kind person and um, uh, try to support them the best that you can do also other environmental management stuff like odor management and see what you can do to create a um, better environment. Now, they, they, we usually have sprays in the, um, uh, we call it at, at the hospital. I know everyone like loves like the breeze and other stuff, but just always be cautious because a lot of people have allergies to scents. I think that's it. Moving on to constipation next. See you for the next one.